Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Well, it's another question video today. And what's that? Well, the question today is, how do I stop people from stealing my digital files off the internet? Well, bad news, you really can't. Now, if you post pictures on your own uh, website, on your own blog, on your own gallery, if you post, post pictures on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Twitter. Once those pictures are up, people can steal them. People can easily download them. Now, a number of years ago, it wasn't quite that easy. You needed to have a specific program for doing it. Or you could go in and do what was called right click. And you would go in and you would right click on your mouse and it would say save as. And you can still do that today. And there were programs that you could go and you could disable the right click or you could put a clear sheet over top of the image so when they went right click and hit save as, it would come up as just a blank image. There was nothing there. But things changed and now many of your browsing programs have the ability to screen capture built into them. Some of your software programs, I have one sitting here on this computer running right now that I can go in and I can tell it to screen capture and it says, do you want the whole screen? Do you want just the open window or do you want a part of that window? I can tell exactly what I want it to capture and it will capture anything that's on the internet. No ifs, no ands, no buts. If you can see it, it will capture. If you're watching a YouTube video and you pause the YouTube video, you can capture that frame. No problem whatsoever. And it does it really fast. So with that technology being available to so many people, what are you to do to stop people from taking your images and using them on their Facebook, using them on yeah, their Instagram account, using them on their business page or whatever. What do you, Bring them in to somebody like me to get me to print them. How do you stop that? Well, there's no way of doing it 100%, but there are ways of making it more difficult for them to do. Now, a quick story here. Many years ago, I had a large client. This client made millions every year. And what they did was they sold scrapbooking pages. And they had designers that would design scrapbooking pages. They would put them up on their website and you as an individual could go in and order the pages and they'd ship them to you. Or if you ran a company, you could go in and you could order cartons of these pages and they would ship them to you. They paid somebody to design the pages and they hoped that somebody would come along and buy the pages. And if they bought the pages, that's how they made their money. They were a big company. They came to me and asked me if I would do their website because they knew I designed websites at the time. I told them I would not touch it because of what they wanted to do. So they went and they had a large company out of Los Angeles design their website. One day they came in, I was doing some work for them and they commented, our website's all up and it's all running. It looks beautiful. It cost us several thousand dollars. And when I asked several thousand, they said, okay, it cost us tens of thousands of dollars. I went, oh, and it was a great website. Don't get me wrong. It was beautiful. It worked well. You could order stuff online. It had a shopping cart. It had a set uh, an area in it that where the retailers could go in and order in case quantities. It was, it was beautiful. And one of his comments to me was when we were sitting actually in this room, he was sitting in that chair. And he said to me that there's no way that anyone can steal an image off of our website. And while he was sitting there and talking to me, I went on this computer and I captured the image and I hit print and I walked in the back room while he was still talking. It took me in total about one minute and I walked in the back room, got the print, walked out, set it in front of him and his face just went. And you could tell that he was freaked out. He says, but you're telling me all the stuff that's up there, people can do this. I says, well, what I'm using is a little bit more advanced, but it is possible. He says, so what should we do? Well, here's the things that I told him to do. Now, is it 100% foolproof? No, but I, I tell people it makes it more difficult for somebody to do it. So here's what you can do. First thing, and the big thing, put the images up in a low resolution format. And I'm guilty. I, I like putting up big images. I think they look better online. I think they, yeah, they don't. <laughs> It, if you're putting an image up that's 1,200 pixels long 
and that's the length, that's the long side of the image. That's too long. If you're putting an image up that's a thousand, that's too long. 800 pixels, that's too long, especially if you're only showing an image that's that big on your website. You don't need them that big. Yes, I'm guilty, big time guilty. If it's your own website, it actually slows down your website. So you, you shouldn't be doing it anyways. But if you put them up there that big, when somebody does right click on them or somebody opens them in full frame and captures them, the quality is amazing. And believe me, I've had a lot of people come in here with captured images, wanting them printed, and they looked great when I printed them. Now, they were their own images. They were images that people had shot for them on Facebook or that a family member said, yeah, you can print these off on uh, Facebook and stuff like that. I printed them off and they look great. I printed them off people's websites. They looked amazing. So please understand, the bigger you put them up, the better they're going to look in print. And many people who do this don't care about the quality. They, If it looks half decent, that's all they care about. So make it as difficult as possible by doing a smallest size possible to put up. If you're putting something up that's 100 pixels by 100 pixels, that's what you should save the image as. If you're putting it on your website where it's 140 pixels by 80 pixels, that's what you should be saving the image as. Don't save it as 1200 pixels by 800 pixels. Put up on your website and then downsize it because it's just going to allow people to steal it. So go with the smallest size image possible. Now, if that means doing different sizes for your gallery, for your Facebook page, for your Instagram, for your website, for whatever, do it, but make them as small as possible. That'll make the prints look worse and it'll make it in many cases not worthwhile people trying to get prints from them. Second thing, and this is a big one and this one bugs me all the time. Before you put a picture up anywhere on the internet, put your name on it. Put your company name on it. Put your name on it. Put your name on it and not some fancy little scroll, not some fancy couple of letters. You want your name on there so it's clearly readable. So for me, Patterson Photography, Patterson Photography Fine Art, first choice photo, big, clear, so people can see why. Well, in a perfect world, if you put it up on Facebook, people would just share that so that the person down the line could go back and see who did the picture and order from you. But people don't do that. They screen capture and then they attach it to something and then they send it out and there's no, no information on it. And somebody will see a picture and go, oh, I'd love a copy of this picture. How do I get it? I can't find out who like, did the picture. I had one person come in here several months back they wanted a copy of a print they had found online. They brought it in to me and they says, can you print this? It was horrible. I couldn't print a postage stamp without it looking horrible. It was tiny file and everything. But the big thing was I knew the photographer. He's a local photographer. So I says, well, first of all, the file size is too small. I says, second, it's a copyrighted image. They says, we've looked for the photographer. We can't find them. I says, here's the photographer's name. If you Google, this is his website, and you can order it from him. They ordered it from him. How do I know? Because I print his stuff, and I printed that image a week later for that customer. So sometimes people are taking them, trying to get them printed, because they can't find the original photographer. So put your information on there clearly of who you are. The second part, which goes right with the first, put your website on it. So on mine, it says Patterson Photography. And on the other side of the picture, it says PattersonPhotography.ca. Makes it easier for people to track you down if, they're, if they don't want to steal it, if they want to actually get a quality print from it. Now, it also helps you because your information's on it. And some people may feel a little guilty for putting it up on Facebook with your name on it. Some won't, but some may. So you may be cutting down on some people in that way. And the final way, and this is a big one. If you're putting proofs up, if you're putting images up, if you're putting just about anything up other than like advertising on your Facebook page or Instagram and stuff, anything that's your image or a customer's image that you've shot, put a big copyright right over top of the image, embedded in the image so they can't get it off. If it's people's proofs, 
put the word proof going across. Now, I'm the first one to say that looks horrible. That's what you want. You want it to look horrible. You don't want them to take it and put it on their Facebook and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. You want it to say proof. <laughs> proof only I've seen people use. I've seen people with do not copy. To me, that's getting a little bit much. Or in a lot of pictures that I do, I have the copyright symbol, the C with the circle around it. Now, if you want to find it on your computer, you hold the Alt key and on your keypad or the numeric keypad, you hit Alt 0169 and up will come that symbol. That's the copyright symbol. You can put it right over top of the image. You can embed it into the image and people can't easily get it off. How opaque do you want it? Do you want it 100% so that people cannot miss it? Do you want it 40%, 30%, 20%? What do you want? That's going to be up to you, where you're putting it, how important it is. I have a number of people come in with digital files that they've gotten off the internet. And they say, well, look, I was searching around, I was doing this, and I found our wedding pictures, and I, I wanna download them, and I wanna get pictures from them, and but it has this huge copyright on it. Why? Because it belongs to the photographer and you can't use them without their permission, without them paying. So if you put it on, it just creates another check, shall we say. Now, dishonest people, they may spend six hours figuring out how to do it in Photoshop to get rid of it or to make it look less copyrighted or whatever. But you're trying to make it so that people will actually come and get it from you. And if you do those things, if you put your name on it clearly, if you put your website, if you put the copyright or the proof across it, it will help. But, and here's the big thing, there's nothing that I have seen that cannot be beaten. So I've had people come in. I had one lady come in with the permission of her photographer. The photographer messed up big time and they lost some digital files and the only copy they had was on their gallery and they downloaded the files from their gallery and sent them to their client and it actually had across it proof. And I had a letter from the photographer saying, this is what happened. You have 100% permission to fix it if you can and make as many copies as a customer would like. It was our fault. And they spent a couple hundred dollars for me to go through on one of the images they wanted and I removed the proof. But it was a lot of work and it was difficult. So just by doing stuff like that, hopefully it makes it enough of a challenge that they won't do it. And the final thing in closing, if you see any of your work being used online that you did not sell to somebody, tell them, tell them to take it down. Stand up for yourself. If you see a photographer, you know that their stuff's being used somewhere else, and it has a copyright over top of the image and you think it's stolen, let them know about it. Because a lot of times people will think, oh, I can just use it because it was online and they don't know. In my case, a number of years ago, one of my clients contacted me. She told me that this radio station was using one of my images on their Facebook page. I contacted them, sent them a bill, and a month later, I was paid $2,500 for the use of that image. Now, should they have done it? They should not have done it, but at least they made good. So if you ever see one of your images, stand up for yourself, tell people. If you see somebody else's image that you may know them, let them know. Only by us doing that will we stop a lot of the theft and a lot of the misuse of our copyrighted images. So until next time, have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Get out there and take some amazing pictures and put them up online with all of your information. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.